I don't want to stretch this out. Oh my god. <laughs> See, it looks bigger than this. Hold on, let me kind of me kind of weasel my way in here a little bit. Oh boy. Hey. How oh, geez. Where's our cameraman or our our, our photo guy? Any... He quit. Sorry. Here we go. You're gonna make it. It's gonna fit. Put it on. It's a video. Oh, it's going. Andrea, it's not coming off. He is the anchor bomb. <laughs> oh god, that's just... <laughs> You're looking suave, brah. You gotta right. get the bomb hey. out. It's a crop top, that's right. more like yeah. me. Crop top is more like me, that's yeah. better. Yeah, smile, I'm so happy. Oh, right, it's, right, not, it's, right, not it's not going. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Right here. Just over the shoulder. Yeah. You, you can do it. Over the shoulder crop top. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, Give her a shaka, brah. Give me a smile, just give me a smile. <laughs> oh no, my smile with my teeth. I can't do it. I can't like be as happy as you. Barbell Shrugged is brought to you by you. To learn more about how you can support the show, go to barbellshrugged.com and sign up for the newsletter. No plan. That's always, yeah, it's always my motto. No plan. Welcome to Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bledsoe. Here with Chris Moore, we have uh, traveled to Las Vegas. We have CTP behind the camera, of course. We left Doug at home. <laughs> he's got, uh, he's, supposedly, he's got more important things to do. He's off somewhere learning something. Yeah, he's learning something. He's getting educated. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about it, folks. He'll pass the knowledge down to you at some point. Uh, we are here with Andrea Eger. We've been trying to heck, <laughs> catch up with her for a long time. Yay! And it's finally happened here in Sin City. You may know Andrea from her Instagram, uh, where she can't stop smiling. <laughs> Chris Moore has described. Smile bonds. Chris Moore has described. Uh, uh, Chris Moore has described you as smiling too much. No, hold on. <laughs> Qualify that. Well, I, I'll just simply say, oh, really? like, wow, oh, really? Andrew smiles a lot, like intensely happy. And now having met you, I go, I'm smiling more often myself. I mean, it's just a happier situation. That's not how I remember the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it wasn't like that at all. Man. Seriously, we see your teeth all this freaking time. I just want to see your frown. That's what the problem with it was. <laughs> make you get a little closer. Right up next to it. Oh, gosh, that's so, so right, close. So you got, you got the poof going on. I heard a rumor that... Uh, that I wear a bumpet? No, I do not. No, no. The, the, I know what a bumpet the rumor, is, the, the rumor is you're actually hiding <laughs> horns. <gasps> Oh my gosh, where did you hear that? <laughs> Must have been on the haters page. <laughs> Maybe it was the da Dave Castro that said that because he doesn't like me. Nah. No? Why, Dave, doesn't, oh. why doesn't Dave like you? No, the real one does, but the one that oh, has the what, Facebook page that, that makes fun of people doesn't. Oh, I don't know about any of that. I, I hear about these uh, the trolls out there, but oh. I'm, not fam I'm not that familiar. Dude, I love my trolls. I love yeah. my trolls. Seriously, they, they say funny stuff all the time. I'm easy to make fun of. This is a sure. lesson Dude. that people need to learn. Yeah. If you get famous right. on the internet, people are going to talk shit about you. You yeah. can be the most pleasant Seriously. person in the world, fit, useful, happy things to say that can help people. <laughs> you can be a good role model. It doesn't matter at all, does it? No, no. Like, what's, do you know, it. like, the worst, what's the worst, like, comment you've gotten in the last, that you can remember? Oh, I get them all the time, but my favorite was someone just tweeted me the other day, and they were like, this is my impression of Andrea's tweet, and it was like all these emoticons with like 10 explanation points, <laughs> and then like, and it was a picture of their face that was smiling up really, really close, and I was like, dude, that's exactly like my tweet. I'm so glad you're getting the message. That's what I want to send people. I was excited when I got it. I want them to feel that way, too. Is that your message? Is your message simple? Look, I'm having a good time. I'm happy. What's so wrong with that? And with pictures and emoticons, and now you can see how happy I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like giving you a hard time because you're, you're training and being happy about it. You said this morning you woke up, what was it over lunch, that so you woke up and just smiling and happy, arms in the air, fists. Is that because it's, it's, it's exciting to have the opportunity to do what you're doing, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what is it? Um, we're here at the MPFL. Yeah. We're, we're professionally competing in the sport of fitness. This is a very interesting scene. Uh, how's your experience been so far? Oh, it's been awesome. It's pretty novel, right? Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's been really cool to work on a team because I haven't done that um, seriously since 2011 at the CrossFit Games, and that was a really cool time in my life. I always still tell people all the time that it was one of the most special memories I've ever had, and so here it kind of reminds me of it. I mean, we talked about it this morning. It's different. It's different than CrossFit. Very, Very different. different. They're opposite sports, kind of, because instead of finding your you know most well-rounded athlete, you almost don't want a well-rounded athlete. You almost want the person that's been hoping for an entire competition of gymnastics things, you know, that's what you want. Those people that are really good at shorter domain. Yeah. Shorter, more powerful. And we just saw yeah. the yeah. most awesome event I've seen in a long time, which is that deadlift ladder. The deadlift yeah. ladder was fun. Where'd that weight start, Mike? One I think it was maybe one thirty five. Yeah, it was kind of a zigzag pattern. There's probably like twenty attempts. Mm -hmm. Really rapid fire, all the way up to five eighty five in the deadlift for men. What was the top? What was the top weight for women? I mean, it was all the same. And so the the women, oh, would women just, go through the whole thing. They yeah, would go through the whole oh, thing. Yeah. But when they when they hit failure, they had to sprint to the end. Yeah. And then so they would alternate uh, men and women. Uh, it was or, pretty awesome. Or in my case, um, after Chris, I had a rounded back deadlift, and I just uh, I just decided to run because I didn't want to get embarrassed myself even more. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, 285 was good. All right, so run weight, through. So weight, <laughs> weight is a thing that's important. Also, the time in which you finish. So there's a strategy. If you, you don't want to dick around trying to get no, more. No, no. It's all timed. And, and your teammates are waiting on you so that they can go. And if you have someone strong behind you, you don't want to take their time. Well, yeah, why why take a, do a rep that costs like three reps for somebody else. Yes. Just move yes. on and let the next person go. You got to like, the ego has to drop. And I think uh, if you participate in CrossFit as an individual, you're used to having to push that extra rep. But here, it's, it could actually be a bad thing. Yes. And they don't want to get the point where you're failing or tearing or making it look like this is really unpleasant. <laughs> they want to make it look like we're all robots. You're jumping in and you're able to do what you're supposed to do. And you're doing it as fast as you can. It's very short. This is very punchy. Uh, you're hearing a lot of unique cues. Like, right when we stepped on the floor down here, you're hearing, like, to my memory, I, I have a background in football and your typical mm -hmm. American sports, and this feels a lot more specific to that, where you're hearing, like, c calls being played. Like, you can see down here, they're like, hash, I think they have, like, hash marks. Oh, yeah. It's like zones of the court where we, we need to get you there at here. There's, certain, there's a different strategy. I know my answer. Would you say this is actually really quite different than there, CrossFit, it's, right? It's as opposite as it could be. We're doing the same movements, which is great, but the way it's set up is completely different. I was listening to my coach and trusting him more than I've ever trusted a coach before because if I'm competing in CrossFit and I'm on my own, like my training has to be my confidence. But like to like today and yesterday, I was listening to my coach tell me about the clean ladder, and he was, he was counting down. All right, you have 15 seconds. I want you to go in five, four, three, two, one. I mean, I was listening listening for him and then there was a one girl that had to skip a few bars on the deadlift because we only had a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and he wanted to get the most weight possible for the girls it's interesting because if there's a tie the tiebreaker is the girl's weight in the ladder so that's important and so he I mean we're listening we're like okay skip this bar go here go now I mean there's very specific cues and you have to listen it's a lot of rapid strategy a lot of strategy I guess the question that gets begged in my mind Michael you might have some interesting insights in this it's a lot different than CrossFit and a lot of people are kind of trying to make comparisons between the two. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of maybe a little heat between them, a little friendly competition, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I think they are really, really complimentary. Do, yes. do you see that same thing? And you have to know the people that come to the MPFL and they're training for this. Maybe they were nobodies. What does that mean? Maybe their name wasn't known. When they show up at regionals next year, they will have been prof professional athletes for a year. They've got confidence. They've got speed. They've got the strength that they needed to compete here. They're going to be great regional competitors. So it's good for CrossFit. Michael? Do you think this takes away from anything else? Or is this its own unique thing that only kind of will stir the pot and move everything forward? I, uh, I think there's a kind of the comparison I've been making is between weightlifting and powerlifting. Yeah. Is, is uh, you know, to the novice, they may look, you know, get people get confused. Even at CrossFit, they still call, like, a snatch a powerlift. Yeah, there's a like, barbell oh. between them. <laughs> you know, that, you know the, 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 common, the common thread is the equipment is the same. Uh, the yeah. movements look a lot alike, but the uh, the athletes that perform in each one of them couldn't be more different. And there's that's a, true. We talked about that. There's probably going to be a 10 percent crossover. 10 percent of the athletes that do well here will do well in the games, and vice mm -hmm. versa. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it, if you if you're cut out for this time domain, then it, it, you're probably not going to be um, the best games athlete. Like, then, I'm not, um, I, I already kind of talked. Uh, don't tell people that. You may not, <laughs> oh, you may not recruit. It. No, go for it. I'm I kind of want to say it. Just because I'm a natural <laughs> endurance athlete, and that's not a secret. Shh, I win the 20-minute events. Oh, my gosh, no one noticed that. So, 
this kind of stuff is things I need to work on. Like, go, go, go. You have 10 seconds to do something as fast as you can, as many reps as possible. That's not usually my domain. Um, I remember the dumbbell snatches at regionals two years ago. Like, I couldn't I couldn't have been had a harder time in more, like, three-minute workouts ever. Mm -hmm. My short game needs work. So that's why this will make me a better CrossFit athlete, too. Make me stronger. Put some pressure on. I'm constantly seeing these girls here move weight, and that makes me think, I should be able to do that. Yeah, not know? just strength, speed. No. Yeah. Yeah. Just I remember speed. I was at the uh, Atlanta Combine, and uh, it was like the first time I've seen like people having, you know, working in less than thirty second sprints, and there was a sense of urgency that that I could tell these athletes haven't had in a long time because they were like stuttering on the box. They'd get on the box and they're like, uh. <laughs> if you're listening, I was shaking the whole platform that we're standing on. That yeah, we we're, could we're cut oh fall Jesus, to Andrea, <laughs> <laughs> Andrea's shaking the the media perch we're on the whole damn thing. It, Andrea, it I'm very heavy. Gravity is not my friend. You're just freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> He's not good with heights. No. Yeah, no. But one thing I'm really curious to see. I'm calling it right now, Mike. Let it be known on record that I'm calling it that what we're going to see out of this sport, this this sort of like uh, mutation of fitness that's competitive. I want to use CrossFit. I mean, they're both experiments, but I think this shorter, more intense, specialized uh, thing that is including novel coaching angles and like kind of maybe like a little bit of substitution and specialization, this is going to be another experiment that makes everything, it pushes everything forward. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen CrossFit evolve to the point where now you have people who are really, really strong, like can go to a weightlifting meet and snatch with anybody basically. Mm -hmm. National level. Yeah. Qualify for nationals. And they're going to, and then they're also able to do like triathlon or marathon or row long distances, swim, which of course... I'm a power lifter. I know weightlifters. We're not going to do that shit. <laughs> We're already sort of out of our game a little bit. But when these guys can now return to a little bit of specialization, like the good crossfit, like evolving and trying this and getting yeah. punchier and more concise, I think you're going to see some freaky performances. I'm really excited to see how this changes everything. I think you're going to see some bigger athletes too. Like the monsters will come out. Uh, yeah. Danny, Danny Nichols is one of those guys. I, I hope we get him soon. Is he the strongest is that McGorry said it was basically the strongest crossfitter? Probably. I'm probably starting shit. Probably somebody's going <laughs> oh, no, bro. Dude, you see well, my snatch, bro? You know who I see he, out here? He's in 300 at regionals, at our regionals in Southwest. I think the guy My dad talked about him all day. Yeah, yeah Sam cool. dancing. Dead well over 600 pounds. Yeah, Sam. Oh. Yeah, so, you know. You on see team. It. Yeah, you gotta, team. yeah he's, he's been on teams, mm -hmm. but, you know, he's probably cut out for this big time. Yeah. yeah. So well, guy, he was in that. regionals and snatched 295 or whatever, and. Yeah. deadlift over 600 with strong guys. Yeah, and, and talking about, you know, sometimes people aren't meant to be doing this, and they're not meant to, you know, and maybe they weren't meant and, or built or naturally uh, defined to do something like CrossFit, and this is going to fit them better. And we were talking earlier about how uh, you were struggling for the longest time to get on CrossFit Level 1 uh, seminar staff. And, uh, and we like, don't know where this is going to go. We can take it anywhere. We <laughs> don't. Like, oh, oh, no, oh, they call him old Michael know. Curveball Bledsoe, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that earlier, and you were talking about you ended up, you tried to get on staff, and it ended up not working out, but it ended up being, like, the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, I want to bring this up because I think people, first off, people don't know about the, uh, the process of trying to go through, you know, that process is not easy. Yeah. And then uh, I think a lot of times people, uh, they fail at something and then all the, and they focus on that failure and then don't move beyond it. And for you, I think it maybe ended up, sounds like it ended up being uh, a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know what that is like to go through the HQ um, level one to teach the level one um, seminars. And it was like about a year process for my life. And it was something where I thought I wanted it so much. Like that was all, that's all I wanted to do was like be a good coach and be recognized in the sport as someone that really, really understood movement and was really able to um, spark that interest in people that were attending level one. And like, that's people. a cool yeah. thing. Help people learn. Yeah, we like helping people. And so um, I put everything towards that and I went and got my um, coach's prep course. And then I, I did okay then. And then I got it again. Just, just to you know, brush off the dust. Got it again, like a few months later, because they encouraged it. Yeah. So I got two of those, and then after that, I taught many. Um, I I interned at many seminars, and it's a cool process because in the beginning, that you know, you're just watching and you're like, okay, I get it. I I feel comfortable here. I know what I'm supposed to do. And then like the second the second internship, they're putting you in the middle of like, okay, you're gonna teach this entire 50 minutes. So you have to hit these points and you have this amount of time to hit each one. Hopefully it goes to plan. 
And it's super high quality. People don't believe us when we say it's it's a good seminar, man. Oh, it's a dude, lot of it's, information. It's comparable to like any other fitness seminar. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, people say, oh yeah, you can get certified in just a weekend. Well, first of all, it's not certif- certification. No, no, we're not allowed to say that. <laughs> we've we've heard that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Times. Yeah. Now, now no. people. <laughs> but um, it's. There are a lot of things you can just get done in a weekend to do something, you know, plenty yeah. of times. Other than college, I can't think by, of anything By else the way, I hold certified. many fitness certifications, and they were all weekend certifications. Yes, yes they that's, were. I, that's yeah. sort of the model, right? <laughs> yeah. USA, USA weightlifting, exactly. uh, NSCA. powerlifting, and NSCA. Most of us have and been doing NSCA's, CrossFit for a year before we even took it. And so, NSCA is not even a weekend. It's a test. And you don't do anything, you don't <laughs> do anything physical on that. You no. don't train in that fucking no, certification. No demonstration. All you got to do is watch a video and answer the multiple choice correctly. Oh. Well, I kind of always had my own coaching um, style, and I had been coaching like 35 oh, hours a week. Strike one. I know. Well, strike one, okay, your own coaching style. <laughs> like, and I had like, um, I had been coaching 35 hours a week for for two years at that point, and like that's all I did. So it was really hard had, for me to take their criticism. Yeah, you as had like, too much experience. Well. In, yeah, doing my own thing, which is like exactly. Yeah. How, it. how dare you? How dare you explore your own interests and your own abilities? Well, <laughs> Who do you think so, you are, Andrea? So when when I was having to change my teaching style or change, you know, exactly what I taught, and going, oh, okay, I'm gonna do it like them. I mean, it was it was hard for me to accept like you know feedback because I would try to put it into my next time I would my next internship but that feedback was like made me feel like I wasn't a good coach I was like oh my god this is all I care about and I'm not good enough still like and then every time I kept going back it was like I felt like I had really successful weekends and the whole time they'd be like okay work on this work on your voice work on your transitions only do this for this amount of time and then transfer over to this by saying this it was like okay I'll do that I'll do everything you're saying and then um at the very end they'd be like okay we still think that you need another one just for practice and you know, we're going to extend you to the next one. But I mean, I did that for a whole year. And so it kind of was one of those things where I believe, you know, that if I had kept pursuing it, that maybe I would have gotten a chance to be on seminar staff. Was it helpful to go through all this rigor? Yes, yes, it was. And and I, I appreciate it to no end because I know that they don't just let anybody um, just walking off the streets do it. They have to kind of uh, respect you as an athlete and a coach a, um, a little bit before they start the internship process. But... Um, then, um, regionals came in 2013 and I was training for them. So I took a little bit of break from internships. And then coincidentally, the only way that I ended up teaching my own seminars is after I didn't make it to the games very publicly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all of my failures Your haters are like, yeah, yeah, you didn't make the games. Blurg. <laughs> Again. Rabble, rabble, rabble. <laughs> yeah. Again. Yep. Surprise. Yep. So last year when I didn't make it. A lot of people will be like, because oh, you're not the best athlete in the world. You have no right to coach people, Andrew. Who do you think you are? <laughs> As if that was a prerequisite for being able it's to not. coach. It yeah. really isn't. It has nothing to do with and, how and I make do sure anything. And make sure we get back on track. But I want to mention oh, yeah, that shortly is uh, last year, uh, well, I still coach Shane Alverson. And I was uh, doing programming for her and coaching her last year. And she DNF'd the uh, overhead squat uh, event yeah. at the regionals. At the very same weekend, you were in SoCal doing the same exact event, what, but the rules were explained differently at our region versus your region. And what had happened is Shana had DNF, and they cut her from the rest of the, uh, the weekend. Mm-hmm. And it was devastating mm-hmm. for her. She didn't even get to do the burpee muscle-ups. Didn't even get to do the burpee muscle-ups. And uh, that was actually really hard for me as a coach to, uh, to, to watch her uh, be devastated. Um, but... Uh, and then we heard we had, we had heard at, at SoCal what? Regional social media. Where did you yeah, hear that? The Twitters. Uh, <laughs> we found out that you know uh, that the same thing had happened to a couple. I think it was you and somebody else. There was actually. like seven athletes in SoCal that it happened to. Yeah, and but they didn't explain the rules the same way. There, there was a lack of standardization. Someone asked the question at ours and said, "What is the prerequisite for the overhead squat?" And they said, "There isn't one. There's not a certain weight that you have to get, even your opening weight. They're, they didn't say that you had to get one, or else you were like." DQ'd. Small little details. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, <laughs> like, you know, uh, debatably, if that would have never happened, no one ever noticed. I'm sure there's other details you get overlooked here and sure, there. I mean, sure. mistakes are made. For humans. But, uh, you know, uh, we found out that they were going to move on and then Shayna didn't get to. And that was even more devastating to her because yes. it was like, oh, fair. Yeah, it just didn't feel fair. And so, it, and then uh, we had heard that you had, uh, had uh, <coughs> voluntarily kind of pulled yourself out. And I remember, and that was actually the, I actually didn't know much about you at that point. I was like, well, that was uh, pretty noble of her, of doing that. And I, I was like, oh, well, now I like Andrea a little more. 
You know, even though I didn't know <laughs> a my, little more. My, my first, well, she my, still smiles too what, much. What, what, what I knew about you at the time, I was like, I didn't know much, and so I was like, oh well, she must be a nice person. <laughs> nice person. <laughs> and then, and then Chris was complaining about your smile so much. And don't use these I, harsh words. You make me look like to, a dick on camera. I had to, I had to defend. CTP's you. call me out right in front of her. I had to defend. I had to defend your honor, even though I didn't even know you. Defender, <laughs> what are you? What are you fucking Prince Charming? <laughs> look at me. Uh, I'm Prince Charming. Come on. Yeah. Now. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> pull the sword from the stone to defend Andrea's honor and assail me, the dragon of the situation. Andrea, I was just saying, well, wow, she's, just, she just, seems really happy. I wonder why she's so happy. Now I just, know you're a very pleasant individual. I think well, you painted a good picture with the dragon and the sword. Yeah, well, now. I'm a writer. Do you okay? think that Prince Charming could regularly go and fend off me from all my haters? Could that? Uh, could I like, carry you around no, or something? That, no, He's no. a strong champion. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that charming. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, quickly lose interest. All right, all right let's get okay. back on the track. Sure, back on track, sure, whatever. Yeah. Um, so, by the way, our haters will call us out for not letting you speak. So there you go. Oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, you. teachers, please. Um, so I, uh, I was given seven minutes to complete mm-hmm. three overhead squats, and I was very confident in doing so. And I tried four different times. What's your starting weight? 175. Yeah, you had to do that to, to, if you were yeah, gonna qualify. Had a sub calc. Yeah. I mean, no yeah. one's no one's playing playing it safe. No, you right. know. And we're trying to get to the games, trying to do big things. So, um, I remember like you know, you're given seven minutes to get three reps, and I got two reps in a row and missed the third three times in a row. And it was the point where like the very first time the you know the crowd was getting in my head, I could see my family. They were like starting to get super nervous, like. Oh, God, like whatever. And um, I remember the intercom, like the the announcers were like, you know. SoCal girls are the strongest girls in the world. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and that, that was getting in my head too because I'm like, they are. And um, oh. so, so, so it, you know, oh, in seven no. minutes, you should be able to do something you, that you can do. And I wasn't able to. So, um, yeah, I, I went on to the burpee muscle-ups because that was the rule. You didn't have a prereq to do that workout. So yeah. I got to do that workout. And then after feeling horrible all night long, after the scores were changing, oh, my God, I was in sixth, then I was in 13th, then I was in sixth again, then I was in, you know, last place, and I was disqualified. I mean, there was tons of um, drama. Yeah. And uh, I ended up calling uh, Julie Fouché, Miranda Oldroyd, and my coach. And between talking to all three of them, like, I totally just felt so guilty that I was like, this isn't cool. This is not good. This is... Um, my weightlifting coach told me that. Um, hang, on, hang on one second. Yeah. Oh. oh. Microphone adjustment, ladies and gentlemen. Microphone adjustment. Microphone um, check. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, I can. Right. In my ear. <laughs> <laughs> in my headphones. Um, my coach told me that um, that this was, even though regionals felt like a big deal to me because it was the only thing I cared about, yeah. really, um, that it was a big deal to me about that event, and it was like so. It was my whole world at that time, but that in real life, like my legacy was not worth messing up just for one event and yeah. so that was like cool to hear that because it was like oh okay like we're talking about my life in crossfit which i plan on being in until i'm like 90 years old so you know i i, I was like okay this is important to step back and realize the big picture so how, how important people don't wow. realize like competition is way more about what you kind of learn about yourself oh, and they, they jump into it they try to crush it the first time out they don't realize <laughs> that it's a much different thing you're gonna learn a lot about yourself you gotta have fun but realize also, for you, how important was it to feel the hurt of it, like the, the pain of just bombing? I mean, and, and like a whole year, you worked so hard. How, a whole year, is it gone necess- in seconds. Is it necessary that you went through that? Yes, for my development as a human, you know, like not just as an athlete, but um, I went through a lot of like depression, like six months of depression after not making it to the games in 2012. Mm-hmm. I was one point behind Lindsay Valenzuela and had been in front of her the whole weekend. Didn't see it coming. Had convinced myself that year that I was like invincible. All year I had been training thinking that I could win the games. I mean, I was, I wish I had that reckless, like um, innocence of like being really new in the sport where I thought that I was capable of literally anything. And so, you know, like I, I just, I wish I could tap into that yeah. because now I'm a little jaded. Now I'm like, okay, I've lost. There are people that are stronger than me. Yeah. There are people that can do more burpees in seven minutes than me probably now. But back then I believed in myself so much that that sent me into like six month long depression. So, so last year was a little bit easier for me because I started understanding, okay, you know what? My, my um, representation in CrossFit and my performance is not who Andrea Ager is. Yeah. Like my worth, my self-worth as a human does not depend on how much I can overhead squat. Because I'll tell you guys, my mom does not care how much I can overhead squat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she actually just thinks it looks really scary. But <laughs> anything <laughs> oh, I do, she's Andrea, like- Oh, you're gonna hurt yourself, oh she's God. Just like, she just kind of puts her hand on her hip and she's like, it just looks really heavy, but good job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think people people are quick to criticize, quick to say, look at that person, they're doing this, they're on that. 
if I was in their position, I could be that. Yes, there's that's a lot a thing. of comments sort of thrown over the fence. But you people, weren't. You weren't in, the, in the, my position. You okay. weren't the person that had this happen to. You weren't the person that followed the emotions of, oh my god, I just messed up. This is big. I could be kept from the games right now. If I mess this up, then it's gonna be an entire year of me knowing that I messed up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's so, tough. like, I kind of started to realize, like, you know, maybe people get this beforehand, but I was not in this mind frame where it's like, okay, I can be a good coach. I'm a, I'm a good girlfriend or, or a sister or best friend or, or daughter. You know, yeah. I'm like all these things. Like, I'm not how, how good I am in CrossFit, and I'm not as good as you know the whether or not I make it to the games won't ever have to do with how good I am it, it yeah. won't so so like I kind of understood that last year so it wasn't as big of a downfall um, but it did make me make a lot of changes in my training of course I remember there was this one guy that I didn't even know that sat next to me and was trying to make a joke trying to be super friendly at regionals <laughs> last year and was like hey how about you get stronger next year huh <laughs> I was like hashtag too soon Get out of my face. <laughs> Hashtag too soon. Get out of my face, dude. Because okay. like, oh, like, I didn't work on getting strong all year, dude. Yeah. Uh, hi. Guess what I would think of every single morning when I wake up smiling? Getting stronger. Okay. Yeah. As you eat your five eggs and, and choke down all the food. Like, yeah, I'm not really. Oh, yeah, it didn't occur to me that I should maybe work hard. Huh. These arms are pretty stick skin, uh, skinny still, huh? But my, we talk, we, a frequent thing we talk about on the show usually is like um, there's – you got to learn to sort of get arm's distance between what you're doing and what, what you're yeah. trying for and the it's goals you're easy. setting, kind of balancing extrinsic, mo- extrinsic motivation against what you feel like you're getting from it. People it's will easy. fixate on what you're capable of and judge you by it. Meanwhile, all the lessons you learn in this hard training, all the things you pick up along the way, it, the, the end result is, is not even – no. It's not important at all. No, 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 it's no. what you learn every day. It's the habits. It's what the relationships Five. you build. It's the little things you pick up. It's the, it is the fuck ups. Two, it's the loss one, that three. teaches you all the lessons. That's what makes a good coach, right? Well, yeah, and it's like you know, I don't like to be too cliche because I love I love um, quotes and I love I love cliche. My love cliche. We all love cliche. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it is like it's not it's not how it's not how hard you hit. It's how hard you can get hit and still get back up, and that's true. Like, if you think about it, it's not, we don't remember the athletes that are like, just, just always winning. They never went through any hardships. You're like, dude, like at regionals this year, I'm not trying to use myself as an example. Like, I'm not trying to be like, this was cool. But like this year I had an epic failure on the rope climbs. I thought I was going to win that event. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting there with Pat Burke. We were talking, he's my training partner and we trained together every single day for the last six months. And we, we go, all right, someone has to win every single event at regionals. This is getting deep. Someone has to win. Why can't it be us? And we were like, yeah. So we were like, we both were like, we, why can't we win the road climbs? Like, that's going to be us. We're going to cross the finish line first. He did win the road climb. So <laughs> that, so de- there's that. Detail. detail. <laughs> he held up However, his part of the deal. <laughs> he did. However, um, I was on world record pace with uh, Manny Janowitz, amazing athlete. And um, on the ninth one, I got no ref. So I did a, oh, I did another how one. How total were there? I did another one. At, there were 10. So I did another one. So I did my 10th one. And then I actually ended up failing my ten, my actual my actual 10th rep that wasn't, you know, a, a, a redo, I actually ended up missing that one five times in a row. Oh, and so, we saw that several times, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and, and sure, it happens to everybody. And that's the thing is I never saw it coming. So it was kind of like a sucker punch, you know? It was like, <laughs> I'm going to win this event and it's going to be awesome. You, were, and I, you had your nose right up yeah, against the victory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh gosh. And, as, a, and as, a, as an endurance athlete, let me tell you, I usually win, like, you know, not I usually win, but I, I usually have the capacity to win a 20 minute or 15 minute long event but I do not have the capacity to usually win a four minute event and so for me to be in in second place that entire workout I felt this like empowering feeling of like this is what it feels like when those power athletes go out there and they're (laughs) winning it was so fun it was so exciting and everyone was screaming and I could I remember looking up and touching and then coming down and seeing how excited everyone was that I touched on every single rep. And they oh. were saying on the intercom, Andrew, you're going to do I it. Know, we heard things <laughs> on the intercom. They're so like, close. <laughs> they were like, I mean, the announcers, I remember hearing this on my third rope climb. We were done in like a minute, a minute of five or something like that. And for our third rope climb, I had already made it back to the thing. And the, the guy, the announcer was like, Andrea Ager teaching how to... <laughs> teaching a how to how to climb up rope chop or something like that like teaching class on how to i was like yeah this is so easy then i got to like and then <laughs> yeah. reality yeah oh, and no. so it wasn't just like oh i did poorly like it was just like i was just close enough to where i you know maybe i could have made it to the games who knows but um i was just close enough where i had that in my reach 
and then and then knowing like as I was failing and I wanted more than anything I wanted my whole strength of my whole life to just help me touch the top and like I keep asking myself why why could I make it 13 and a half feet but not 14 every single time why could why is that and um and and uh I just saw that that glimpse of like my future just slipping away and then after that event it was it was it was interesting because it was a fun event even though it was really um awful but it was fun you know what I mean like it was like wow that was the funnest thing I've freaking ever done for a while until it was the worst thing I've ever done. So apart from the <laughs> crippling, the crippling you know I mean? heartbreak was less yeah. fun but mostly yeah. fun what? but I mean you know it's like you have to afterwards just be I remember looking at the camera and being like I'll get you next time rope climbs like you know like just mad about it but still like that was ironic wasn't it everyone huh. <laughs> never saw that but anyways then the next morning we had the 50s and I had been suffering through that workout and training just like everyone had it's like a really hard workout yeah, I had done it four times I feel times. like that's one to do once <laughs> yeah oh yeah once unless you're the fifth week or you know the fourth week to go and you've had five right. weeks to know yeah. the workouts now you and then know you need how to do it once hurt. a week now, yeah well, just, now you're just conditioning yourself yeah. to like hate it hate it yeah so embrace the suck Dude. kind of thing um, and yeah I came back and I won that workout and Damn. it was one of those things where, like, I knew I knew when I won that I couldn't make it to the games anymore. Like, that was right. gone. I wasn't happy because I no one was happy for me because I made it the games. They didn't care about that. They were like, oh, my gosh, she just went through this epic struggle that we all watched with, like, pain. I mean, let me tell you, the social media aspect of my phone is this loud. I always am, like, reading, getting notified, whatever. It's just a loud atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that night... I like no one tweeted at me no one tagged me anything no one texted me I mean it was very silent like the world was quiet they were like oh dang this sucks you know yeah, and, yeah so it was like kind of deep kind of quiet wow. and so it was just me and my thoughts for like a whole night and then the next morning it was almost like everyone felt like oh she she won she defeated it she even though she's not made of the games who cares she's on top now who cares about anything else like, and it wow. felt like it was like it wasn't about CrossFit anymore. It was about like, it wasn't about deadlifts and, and power cleans and, and wall balls. Like it wasn't about what we were doing. It was about that, like the mind frame and like, how, like you came victorious, you know, you go through an epic struggle in front of everybody. And then the next day you, you, you take that defeat and you use it for a win. And it was like almost like a story, much less numbers on paper. This is a less than like a, a chance at enlightenment to realize, well, maybe winning is comes in all kinds of forms. Like this is just one way yeah. to win. I maybe got a little something more valuable for me. I mean, maybe in five years time, it's always hard to tell what the real significance is, but in five years time, maybe you're like, I'm sure glad I got my heart broken a few times. Oh you know, yeah. You know, what oh, that yeah. teaches you. Teaches you. Um, yeah. Those lessons are irreplaceable for sure. Let's so. take a break real quick. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get to see Andrea's bedtime uh, ritual. Oh gosh. So. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know. So stick around. <laughs> Quick break. All right, welcome back to Technique Quad. I'm Doug Larson with the Barbell Shrug Podcast. This is video number two of the squat series. Uh, video number one was an overview video. We talked about air squatting, goblet squatting, and a little bit about learning uh, how to squat off of a box with uh, Gray Cook's reverse patterning concept, which I think is super, super cool. So uh, if you're looking for the basics of squatting, definitely check out the overview video. We'll touch on a few of those things again in this video, obviously, uh, since we're talking about front squatting, a lot of the, uh, the concepts as far as squatting down are the same. Really just your hand position is changing and the, the dist distribution of the load is changing a little bit. So it alters your mechanics slightly, uh, but really it's all kind of the same thing. So uh, check out the overview video, video number one. Today we're talking about front squatting. So. So. First thing that you need to know if you're trying to front squat is how wide to grab on the bar. Uh, what I like to do to start with is just put your hands right out in front of you, you're doing the zombie thing, and then see basically where you grab. So from here, I usually tell people to put three fingers, maybe even two fingers, depending on how mobile their wrists are and their shoulders are. I put the pads of my fingers only, so I'm not grabbing like this, just the pads right, right underneath where your nails would be right there, and I step forward, I put it on my, like right above my collarbones, right on my neck, and then again, with just the pads of my fingers on the bar, I'm gonna rotate up and I'm gonna put my elbows forward as far as I can. I'm gonna step forward from here again, elbows as high as I can, and then I'm gonna let go like this, and this is the shelf the bar is gonna sit on. You don't need your hands to front squat. So I like to teach the zombie squat like this first, 
That way you can see if someone's really able to get all the way down with good technique and they're not compensating, they're not compensating by bending over and the bar's tearing up their wrists, okay? So start with the zombie squat when you're teaching the, the front squat from here. I should be able to go all the way down just like this and the bar doesn't roll forward. It's very correct if you get instant feedback if you roll forward because the bar will obviously roll off of you. Zombie, zombie. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, so uh, zombie squat first. Again, pads of the fingers, usually right in front of your shoulders. You don't need to have your hands way out here. There's, there's a time and place where some weightlifters like to have their hands super wide, like when they're going to jerk. But for the most part, right out in front of you is going to be the easiest place to start. Then you can ratchet your hands out over time. Okay? So two fingers, pads, walk forward, put it against your neck, elbows as high as possible. And then I'll teach the rest of the, the front squat technique from this zombie squat position. So my elbows need to be at least as high as the bar, okay? maybe, maybe even a little bit above the bar. That's ideal. From there, again, just like a regular squat, feet shoulder width apart. I can toe out a tiny, tiny bit, weight on my heels. My butt's not going to go as far back as it would on an air squat or a back squat. I'm going to have to stay pretty vertical. My knees are going to go out, staying on my heels. And at the bottom, I'm still pretty vertical. My back is not rounding. I have a very vertical torso. My knees are wide over my feet. They're not diving together. My hands are high. My knees are not in. They're out. Weight's on my heels. Good posture. And then I stay vertical, and I drive through my heels on the way up. Okay? This is different from back squat. That's different than, like a, than a more traditional powerlifting style back squat. A high bar Olympic squat's a little bit different. We'll touch on that on the back squat video. But with a front squat from the side, I'm going to be pretty vertical. I'm not going to go butt back when I front squat because when I go butt back and I bend forward, my elbows go down. When my elbows go down, now all the weight is forcing my wrist into hyperextension. That's how people get super achy wrists because their elbows are always down especially if they're grabbing the bar. You see that all the time where people grab the bar first, then they go like this and their elbows are down and then they try to squat like that, okay? And then they do a bunch of thrusters like that and their, their wrists end up uh, understandably pretty damn achy. So uh, you never want to start like that with your hands all the way closed. There's a time and a place for that. If you have really good mobility, you're really good at front squatting, you can front squat with your hands closed. But most people probably can't when they're first starting out. That's why I like to start with just two fingers, pads only. And then as I rotate through, my fingers are straight and just the pads of my fingers, like I would take a fingerprint with, are on the bar, just like that, elbows all the way in front of me. Okay? Uh, so that's the basics as far as how to get into a good position. Um, you, can, you can come here. And then if you really can't, if you're always doing this and you really can't correct that and you, you even have problems with the zombie squat, some people just can't do it. Um, they go like this and like they don't have any shoulder muscles and they just always lose it. Uh, I will let people do this sometimes. I do this myself sometimes if I have, if I have achy elbows actually. I get front squatter's elbows, what I call it. Uh, you can do kind of the bodybuilding style grip. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it, but I, I'd say it's not ideal because if you're going to catch cleans and whatnot and do thrusters and CrossFit, it's better just to be able to practice here instead of being like this. But there's still nothing necessarily wrong with it. You'll still get strong legs you know, and strong total body strength from squatting just like this. All the mechanics, all the mechanics of your lower half are more or less the same. So, so you can do that. Uh, the other thing you can do if you really can't um, do a regular kind of rack front squat grip uh, is you can tie a, a strap or two. Uh, just use like a, like a strap you'd use to, to pull extra weight off the bar. Uh, use a strap tied around and then you can, just, you can just hold the strap like that. And then it makes it where you can still be here where you're externally rotated and your elbows are high and you're not fully internally rotated like this, which I feel like helps this position kind of destabilizes your scapula just a little bit compared to being here. You're a little more stable because your, your arms are fully externally rotated. It's easier to get your shoulder blades a little more together where they're not rolling forward and whatnot. So uh, having a strap is an option. Uh, I didn't even think to grab straps before this video.
All right, so a second ago, I really didn't think to grab straps because I wasn't going to talk about them, but uh, I tied some bands on here. It doesn't really matter what it is necessarily. Just grab these bands. You can just come forward, come up like this, and then you can front squat like this. And there's, again, nothing necessarily wrong with that. Uh, a lot of power lifters do this because they won't necessarily have the, the mobility if they're really big guys or they spent you know, uh, you know, 15 years trying to you know, bench 600 pounds, then it's hard to front squat in that case for a lot of people. So having a strap uh, makes it really easy where you can be in basically the same position, but instead of your fingers reaching the bar, the strap's reaching the bar for you. So that's a great option. Um, real quick for the folks, since you've been unracking it like that, do you want to... Oh yeah. You want to tell them that you were doing that for the video, <laughs> so everyone's not an asshole at their gym. Yeah. <laughs> You're going. Yeah. All right. CTP had a good point about how not to be an asshole at your gym. Uh, for the video, I was. For the video, I was here and I was walking the weight out this way and then squatting. Uh, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but for the most part, you're not going to be doing that. You're usually going to be facing into the rack. You'll walk backwards when you're fresh, and then you'll do a bunch of reps, and then when you're tired, you'll come in and you'll, you'll rack the weight. I usually go all the way in and then down. That way you don't go halfway in and then miss it and drop it, which there's nothing wrong with, with, dropping, a, with dropping a bar, drop it on the ground, no big deal. But uh, if you miss the clip and you don't expect it to fall into you, especially only half the weight, uh, it's probably going to hurt. And then if you don't have clips on, the weights are going to slide off and then the bar's going to swing over and it's going to crack someone in the head and they're going to die. So you don't want to do that. Uh, the other thing that we didn't talk about, in fact, uh, let me put on a plate real quick. All right, last quick thing, we're going to talk about missing lifts and spotting. Uh, there's actually nobody else here, so I can't really demo spotting for you, but um, what you can do is since front squats are a relatively safe thing to do when you're getting tired, you can just squat down. And when I'm here, it's easy. I just, I just drop the weight on the ground. It's no big deal. If, if I have, um, I don't want to demo spotting. Okay, well, I was going to talk about spotting, but there's no one else here, so I can't really demo it for you. Uh, what we just decided we're going to do is we're going to do a, an entire video dedicated to uh, spotting for the, the front squat, back squat, and overhead squat, which, top secret, you don't spot the overhead squat. So uh, we'll talk about that in a different video. Uh, if you have any questions about squatting or anything else, or you want to check out any of our other videos, you can go to barbellshrug.com, click on the episodes tab at the top of the page, click on technique wad, you can check out all the videos in the library. I'll see you on video number three for back squats. And we're back. My hair looks good. <laughs> okay, okay we, we totally got good. off track. You lost some volume on the poof. Oh, I hate uh, when that happens. But it's all right. It's like handstand push-ups. They do that too. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can fix that later. Um, what, are we, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, we got totally off track earlier. So Where's the track? <laughs> we were on the track. Of like you, you were... You tried to do the level one stuff, didn't really work out. So what ended up happening instead? Well, actually, it was kind of comical because right after, you know, we're going through this big depression, like, oh, I didn't make it again. Everyone knows. Mm -hmm. And then instead, it's like all these all these gyms started calling my calling me and my manager and emailing us and saying, hey, Andrea should come teach at our gym because we know she's not busy. <laughs> <laughs> get it, Andrea? Yeah, get it. You don't have anything to do or train for it. No. Right. <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, it was, we went along with it and we started doing it, but we didn't call them seminars right away. It was just kind of like a visit at their gym where I would teach like an hour and a half or whatever. And then it just started getting so long. Like I'm just, I, I like talking as you guys can tell, I've been probably talking too much on the show already. No, nope, just no, no you're, you're doing good. <laughs> I do like getting it out there. I would prefer that our guests talk more and we talk less. Okay. Okay. Well, um, but that I'll doesn't always work out, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in general, like I, it started being like question and answer. What was it like when you got to meet Rich from? What was it like when you got to meet these cool people that I'm like, let me tell you, it was awesome. And, uh, <laughs> or like, I you just make shit up. At that no, point. but I always tell them like embarrassing <laughs> stories in front of people that are like really cool because those are like way funner. You're like, you know? I like, got like my this. thumb knuckle deep in his average. It what? was great. No. <laughs> this is so weird. So weird. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I left Andrew speechless. Yes. A little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but yeah, so and they asked like, of course, about diet and training and stuff like that. And so it used to be just that, and then I would teach for a few hours. But then it got like really organized, and I started sneaking in a little bit of my testimony. And then every one I went to, it got longer on accident. And then um, eventually, my testimony is like 90 minutes long. So I talk about me and my like my relationship with CrossFit and how much it means to me, and mm-hmm. also like my relationship with God and how much that means to me too. And so, um, so 90 minutes of that, and then we do like three hours of CrossFit. So we just teach usually the snatch, um, usually the snatch. Sometimes the clean and jerk, we'll switch it out. And uh, but then we do gymnastics, and there's a short wad at the end, like an eight minute wad. So the whole thing is a blast. And I go, I go, I teach it, these, and I get on a high, like so excited about like talking about God and like spreading, spreading love and telling them stories and like I always cry at all my seminars I've never taught one where I didn't cry at and my favorite is that when the crowd enables me to do so by crying too I'm like thank you thank you you're making me want to talk longer cry, like Mike. no like they do they do and they like tear up I'm like yes this is intense if you, if you can make me cry <laughs> I'll give you a hundred dollars. I won't be able to. I can already tell you. you're like too tough to crack. I can already His tell. His beard's on too tight to allow tears to flow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good point. Like, you can anybody can do a really good. Not anybody, but it's common. Let's say it's common to be able to teach the lifts in a really good way. There's lots of great oh, yeah. minds out there. Oh yeah. But I think what people need to focus more on is how a unique story. Your everything else about you that makes you strong in the face of this adversity, your personal story, your, your foundation, what allows you, what fuels you to train hard. People yeah. need to see that side too, to yeah. understand it's not just like how many times you snatch a bar. I mean, no. people do it once a week, 10 times a week. People eat this, they eat that yeah. and they're all good and it yeah. gets stronger. What else is going on? Yeah. Your, 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 the spiritual side of things is incredibly important. The, the way you face adversity is incredibly important. Yeah, and I moved for CrossFit to go to Los Angeles when I was um, 22. I moved after college and I found CrossFit for like probably three months. And then right when I got there, I found a team and I made it to the games. I mean, that part of my story is like, is my is so exciting? I like I'm like just like yelling at them like you wouldn't believe how cool it was because they and they've never heard anybody. Most of the seminars I go to, they've never met anybody that's ever made it to the games. Yeah. So they're like, oh my god, what would that be like? The people in Coastal Rico are like, we can't understand her because she's talking too fast, but it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but like your story so, got so intense, the music <laughs> in the room picked up. It did. Oh now the story ended, so it went off. Yeah. Um, but so uh, with the seminars, it's been really cool. And like um, I, you know, talk about that. But then I also talk about how I changed my training. You got to change. Got to wipe off the whiteboard all the time and go, OK, that didn't work. Now let's do this. I mean, I was yeah. training with Olympic lifting coach Waxman's in L.A. for three years. And I've gotten really good technically for Olympic lifting. And then I had um, I, I switched it up and tried uh, power lifting yeah, for didn't three you go and a half to, months. To train with Louis yeah. for yeah, like was a month or a couple three weeks? and a half months. I lived three there. and a half months. I lived there wow. from September 1st until the the end of December and so wow yeah I was um, working with Louis Simmons and trying to get stronger like powerlifting yeah. and it was good because I still keep all that stuff in my training I still try to keep conjugate in my what I'm doing now and it helps um, but you know like I don't like taking CrossFit completely out but I tried it and it was good for me it made me suck wind in the no. open this year a little bit but it was good for me and so you change all the time depending on what experiences you go through and that's basically what my seminar is about is like everyone goes through hardships and it might not be CrossFit and the story is not about me and my CrossFit story it's about you wanting this job or this relationship or this thing that's intangible that you can't put your hand on that yeah. you want so bad you want it more than anything and you can get it and, it, and if you try your hardest and you don't get it it's gonna be okay yeah. like you're gonna be fine like your your family's still gonna love you your people that you hang out with all the time are still gonna like you like you're gonna try to do something else and we're gonna change things all the time like I don't even know what I'm gonna do next month or in six months or people say what's your five year plan I'm like yeah right that's not that's not realistic for me I don't even know where I'm gonna live next month like I <laughs> I, I lived in a you don't even have a 90 day plan. No, no, no. I, I lived in a one bedroom apartment with Maddie Curley in LA. Her one bedroom apartment shared a bed with her wow. for three and a half years. You think that was my plan? <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm here. And then I never left. Okay. <laughs> like these are things yeah. that just happen and you're like, wow. But a, but a plan is a plan is like necessary that it allows you to kind of assess what do I want? And I start heading in the direction. I think the only thing a plan really does is that it allows you to think, here's the first best step I can take towards that. I hit it hard and passionately. But then from there, who knows what you're going to discover. Yes. But each step yes. has to be a passionate, you know, forceful, intentional thing. Yes. Then if you don't think about it that way, then you're gonna be you're gonna be too hard on yourself. Yeah. Like, oh I tried to this get this plan and it didn't work out. Now what? Like that's not how I see things at all. Like like you said earlier, like you go through and you have a big chunk and you go, okay, now I'm moving to Ohio for this powerlifting thing. I'm gonna do it as awesomely as I can. 
Then when that's done, I'm going to do the next thing as awesomely as I can. Now I'm doing the NPFL. Dude, do you think I'm going to start changing my training so I can be the best NPFL athlete I've, I could possibly be? Yeah. Yeah. Shameless plug. Any coaches that want to get me on your team? <laughs> I'll do anything. <laughs> well, the greatest thing uh, the greatest thing we learn at a powerlifting, guys like Louis, who's I mean, so epic, uh, uh, we learned the same lesson. You know, Mark Bell will share it. Uh, AJ will share it. Uh, the powerlifting crew, I think we learn the best lesson is you got to find as many ways to get strong as you can. Mm-hmm. Experiment, tinker. For you, who knows what might work? Mm-hmm. You can't make the mistake of going, well, here's my preconceived notion about what it takes to get strong because I'm coming from this background. Weightlifting, yeah. crossfit, whatever. And nothing who knows? works perfectly. Yeah. I, come on. I mean, that, there, that's, not, that's like saying I didn't get strong because I did all these things. And now what, what can I do to actually get me strong? I am so much better of an athlete every year I've competed at regionals, but guess what? Everyone else gets better too. Yeah. Okay? Isn't that unfortunate? Like, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm <laughs> such a better, I'm so much stronger than I was last year. Right now I am. And and then there are still girls that are always going to be stronger than me. It's fine. I see it's people good. get beat up. They beat themselves up because like, well, last year I placed this at regionals. Oh, whatever. And this year I thought I was I was going to crush it. And I did better. I PR'd my snatch and I ran faster and I swam better and I climbed the rope more times. But I got eighth and I feel like shit about it. Like, no, you did so much better. That's why you got to yeah. detach yourself from where you finish. Like, you are better. You are not the that, same person. You're that's better. That's like intrinsic motivation is really important. And that's something that's developed with experience. I think a lot of people that get into the sport in the beginning, everything's extrinsic. They're measuring themselves against other people oh, yeah. all the time. Time. And I think, uh, you know, and the athletes that can stick around, I mean, if all you ever have is extrinsic, extrinsic motivation, you won't stick around very long because you're going to fail. Even no if matter you get really what. good. Even no if you, you are. Best. I got something that big for you guys. Do it. So Do it. I've always wanted to like really sit down with Spieler and talk to him before. Uh-huh. Chris, Chris, Chris Spieler. Legend. And um, I've, I've met him plenty of times, but like he's always busy doing Spieler stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to like bother him. <laughs> Spieler stuff. <laughs> Hashtag Spieler stuff. And um, he's a... Uh, I got to go on an airport, like to, on an airplane with him, and like um, we both were transferring in uh, Park City, um, mm-hmm. Utah, where he lives, and uh, I was stopping there to go to LA, or sorry, LV, like Las Vegas, and so we were both coming from Colorado to do this like Faith RX camp, and I got to know him there really, really well, but like not by myself, you know, creepy stuff. I want to be by myself, mm-hmm. and so then like we were like waiting for the airport, and we were talking about stuff, and I just was like, so what'd you think about this at regionals? You know, because I gotta watch him, but like I didn't get to talk to him that much, yeah. and like that is so cool. Like I got so much. I feel like I experienced so much just by hearing him talk about the way he looks at things and the way that CrossFit HQ looks at things. You know, I mean, he's positive about so many things that were like, oh, I wonder what their stand is. Like, dude, he's he loves fitness, of course. You know, yeah. um, but something he did say is the best advice he had, his dad ever gave him was to never compare yourself to anyone else yeah. because then you'll only be as good as they are. And he said, I don't want to be as good as Rich Froning. Like I, I don't, because I'll, not, I'll never be better than him, you know? And he's yeah. like, I, I'm not going to go, oh no, I'm this far behind him. Everyone's behind him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just is well, kind of a try, cool thing. If you try to emulate what somebody else has done, that's their path. Yeah. That won't is. work for you. The best quote I've ever heard is uh, Oscar Wilde says, yeah, I'm paraphrasing, why would you try to be anybody else? That, those jobs are taken. You have a your role. role. Yeah. Like the only thing anybody has, well, two things. You've got what you are, what you're capable of, what ah. you love, which is completely unique. And it's, it's, people don't value that enough. Like, no, you you are the only person who can be you, and all you've got is right now. You, mm-hmm. Your history is whatever it was. Oh, yeah. You're not and guaranteed. Your future, who you're knows? not guaranteed tomorrow. You've got now. What will you do? You should do the first, next best thing you think you can do that makes you happy, that fills what you think is important, and you got to do it hard. Mm-hmm. And you can't worry so much about what you're going to get out of it or where you're going to go with it. That doesn't matter. What happens is what, what matters now is this step I take. It's got to be my best step. Mm-hmm. And that's when ma- I think that's when magical Amen. shit happens, man. Amen. Amen. Preach on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our dance on. Oh, man. I, uh, I, I, and this might be, this is just for me, I guess. I'm going to put this out there. The, uh, something I was reading recently um, by uh, Mark Gaffney. Uh, he uh, wrote a, a good book. You got to check out the author um, if you want to, like, nerd out on some uh, enlightenment type stuff. We do. But, yes, um, yes, indeed. Yeah, he was talking about like uh, a lot of times ego gets caught up in what other people are doing. Yeah. So like your social media, Ooh. like ego, <laughs> ego is the thing that kind of like is the thing that wants to attach to other people. I want to be as good as Rich Froning. I want to be as good as this measures. And then like you got to get to know your true self. And a lot of people never get past ego and find their true self. And their true self is the one that can exist by itself. You know, ha- kind of by that Oscar Wilde. Uh, 
quote, you know, mm -hmm. be yourself, you know, everyone else is taken type of thing. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, if you feel like you're always comparing yourself to other people, you know, maybe take a step back, maybe do some meditation. There's all sorts of, there's all forms of spirituality that you can maybe look into to like think about how your ego might need to step aside or at least try to step away and recognize that your ego may be hijacking you a little bit Yeah, and then let your true self kind of play out. If you, that might have gotten a little deep, but ego. no, <laughs> no, no, no. But it's just deep enough. It's the <laughs> hardest, the hardest thing to do is to let go of expectations and to be kind to yourself, especially when you're in a hyper competitive environment with heavy weights yeah. and eyes on you and people making comparisons. Oh, look at your worth. It's not much because you didn't reach my expectations or you didn't dude. win this thing. I pat myself on the back all the time. I'm like, dude, that was great today. Like, Dusty wanted me to do six tower cleans unbroken at 145. It's not that heavy. It's, like, doable, right? People can do yeah. that. Yeah. I've never done it before. So then afterwards, <laughs> I'm like, so Dusty's like, hey, great job on the dumbbells and the power cleans. He's not my coach. He doesn't even work with me. But today he was. And I'm like, yeah. that was the most I've ever done. Thanks, gosh. And I was that's, so pumped. I that's was probably like, why Thanks. you're so happy. You're, like, living in your true self. You're not letting <laughs> your ego not hijacking you and that's why your smile is on all the time <laughs> Hashtag I think. Smile bomb. That, that's my theory that's my theory <laughs> it's, it's quite pointless to say oh look at her instead of the way i do she only did that in that event but dude you realize like let's say in the snatch there's a 12 year old chinese girl who's doing triples with your best ever lifetime <laughs> yeah. pr in a snatch oh like, man there's all, the, the scale <laughs> rel the relativity thing it's there like, there's yeah. somebody always who's just gonna crush always. your ass even crossfit like that you know there's a girl that snatched um or okay there's a woman um name i think i forget her name but she was in she's from russia and she it was in european regionals and we were having this conversation with katrin davis otter and marcus andren yesterday mm -hmm. and she snatched like 200 at her regionals and then was like okay now i want to i want to get wow. the world record so she put 2.5s on got 205 and then she looked around and saw that no one else was going a little heavier and so she just sat down and chilled it out for the third rep didn't even take it and and she, her her best is like 295 her best Whoa. snatch is almost yeah. 100 pounds and yeah. it's like one of those things where it's like it put it in puts it in perspective and it's like okay now she's trying to be a crossfitter she's not trying to be crazy weightlifter girl but she could do that and that's like humans can do that like our crossfit guys are still snatching less than you know the world class girl athletes and that's yeah. cool like that's sick yeah. you know so you can't ever just be like i'm the best in this tiny little group what if you're in a region that's not that good what if you're in a, a gym that's not that good what if you're in a you know world spectrum of a sport that's only been open for seven years who knows yeah. you know i mean there there's just like so many things that you compare yourself to are you in a small pond or a big pond it doesn't matter and you're doing your best keep, this is gonna keep radically changing best. this is gonna keep changing month to month year to year like Yes. What Tony made the point, like, look at the Fran time that was world class in 2002, three, and look at it now, like, just expectations. Angel's taking the clothes off. Get the camera. Uh, <laughs> teasing the audience a little bit, but like the way <laughs> standards change so rapidly. As soon as somebody achieves something, the way things can accelerate, and move forward. That's why I'm really pumped to see how this changes things. This event here, but things were gonna change so much. You gotta let go of like what you think is good or bad. Now, nah, this, this doesn't, doesn't even matter, matter man. It this doesn't is a, matter. This is a wild journey we're on. Like, oh yeah. Take. Look at the details and sort of take notes of how wild this all is. There's plenty just to learn yeah, from. The analogy he used last night, well, or not analogy, but the story he told was sort of CrossFit.com posted in 2003 uh, that uh, if you could beat uh, Greg Emmonson. Uh, Greg Almonson. Oh, Greg Emmonson. Almonson. Almonson. sons. We, we all know. We, yeah, whatever. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> was it a world record Fran time of 358? 358 and everybody and in the room laughed. Everybody was like, oh, I wasn't I laughing. I'm like, man, my best time's like 1215 or something. <laughs> <shit." laughs> but they got a t shirt. But the, the people but that they, Yeah, they, if you can beat it and film it or whatever, you got a t shirt. Which yeah. filming, and they're like, how do I do that? Where's my video? Well, I don't know if they recorder? said film it, but whatever. Yeah, yeah there's like, yeah. if you can beat it, we'll send you a shirt. I was yeah. like, it's so like and 358, man. I do remember when yeah. like breaking what? four minutes was a big deal. Yeah. Like for me, I was like, I was like, oh, I broke four minutes. Now I want to break 330. Now I want to break, uh, Three, but then I saw Chris Spieler do it in like, you know, a minute fifty eight or something like that, and I was like, ah, oh god, I'll what's the up. point? I'm 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 happy with my you know my three fifteen. I'll just keep it there. That's when you go back to drink goat milk and going back to weightlifting. Yeah, that's when I like I haven't done Fran in years. <laughs> I just want to squat. The comparison. Actually, Fran for me, I tell people it's like the easiest thing in the world for me. You know why, Andrea? It's so easy. Pull ups are so easy for you. Yeah, I well, no, it's because <laughs> I 
between each rep of the pull-up, I... Oh, she, she snored she's, and... I took offense that you snored. <laughs> Into the microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay, well, let me continue. Right. Hey, by the way, uh, somebody please make that a ringtone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Andrew Egger snore. <laughs> <Gross. laughs> the Egger bong <laughs> snort ringtone. There you go. But, yeah, you've again. Got a, you've got another one. you got three snorts that you can put make a ringtone. Let me say, let me get a third one. The reason why Fran is so easy is because by the time I can get in those pull-ups, I'm so completely recovered because I do one, I wait around for like five minutes, I do another one or two, and the thrusters go bang, 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 thrusters done. Okay, another 15 pull-ups. Let me suffer through this. Gravity, thank you very much. Gravity, Gravity can be a real bitch Gravity. sometimes. <laughs> uh, watching Chris do Fran, uh, you, know what, uh, you know, when I first met Chris, he, uh, he thought weightlifting was stupid. Well, you didn't uh, think, it was, you didn't no. think it was stupid. You were, you were less accepting of it. I was a power then, lifter. So that was the time when power lifting, we were talking about earlier, this competition. Like, there's a barbell here between MPFL and CrossFit, and everybody tries to compare them directly, even though they're not quite apples to apples. But weightlifting, I was a power lifter. Of course, I thought it was the better thing. And you're a weightlifter. I think, well, this guy, he'll figure it out eventually. He'll okay, come over to the right side. What I like is that you're saying that there's not still like a feud between weightlifting and power lifters, and that is wrong. Um, because that's like saying that like Catholics aren't still feuding with Protestants. And they well, are. I would say it's gotten they a little, are. I think it's gotten. It's still an epic, like. Well, Andrea, to be fair, I think now, one thing I give, look, a lot of what we want to do here is say, look, CrossFit still has so much awesome stuff to offer. Yeah. One of them is bringing disparate groups together. Oh, like yeah. uh, a Diane Fu can come in with a Mark Bell. Mark Bell is yeah, a power lifter. Seriously. Does seriously. not snatch, cannot snatch. He'll tell you right now, this is will dumb. Not, I'm not doing this. In the, not. In, the, in the old world, Mark Bell and Jesse Burdick would not have been hanging out with Diane Fu. No. In the old and world. now yeah, they that's are. True. And now, yeah. you know, because guys like, of CrossFit. Yeah. And now we can <laughs> experiment and tinker with like, how, what can power thing add? What can weightlifting teach? Like, because now you see guys like in Mark's gym, people are doing a lot more front squats than they used to. They're working on position, they're working on deep squats. They're they're wearing weightlifter shoes. It's mixing and changing. So that is changing for the better, and this will change for the better. CrossFit and MPFL will benefit from each other and learn and grow, and they'll both will succeed if the both sides remain willing to let it happen. And I'm doing nationals next week in the or next month in the Amer- like the American nationals, uh-huh. and that's yeah, I'm pretty excited for weightlifting. There. Okay, oh, yeah. see you there. Yeah. High five. High five. High five you there. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we're doing that, and that's like CrossFit has allowed me to, like, do that. I mean, it kind of blows my mind sometimes when I see people that are obviously haven't worked out for, like, 30 years, and, like, they come to my seminar, maybe they've been doing CrossFit for a few months or something, and I'm like, wow, like, they're really, you know, like, inflexible or maybe just not used to it yet. So they're not used to squatting below parallel. They're not used to snatching things above their yeah. head. And I'm like, man, like, we're teaching the Olympic lifts to normal people. Like, that kind of, like, always blows my mind. I'm like, that person walking on the street, we encourage them to learn how to snatch and clean it. That jerk. was never yeah. happen That's before. cool. No, the, like, that's epic. There's no other and path. Those, those was people can maybe up. make it to nationals someday. You yeah. know yeah. what I mean? Bench press oh, it? and leg presses <laughs> before, and now they're learning snatches. Did you have yeah. to do? Did you do the American Open this past year? It you did. did? Yeah, yeah. Three hundred and fifty-three registrants at the USAW uh, American Open. Uh, and uh, that was the largest weightlifting meet in the world to date. Uh, Ever. Yeah, yeah. it was a, is a world record. Not an American record, a world record of registrants. Uh, I say because of CrossFit. And beca- yeah, oh, da- no doubt about it. Oh, like half of them were CrossFitters, and they was doubled from last year. And fortunately, there was a big ice storm that kept like <laughs> oh, like 25% of them out. It was, I think it was Asterix. fortunate because or ha- in. had that or not- Or in. We were stuck there. Yeah, yeah. Had that not happen. <laughs> yeah, CTP <laughs> missed it. He was going to come in. We were going to do a mini documentary, and then uh, it, it didn't pan out because his plane couldn't get in due to ice. And uh, yeah. Texas ice. It's different than actual ice. Yeah. <laughs> Texas well, ice they, sounds, they can't for a band. They're not ready to treat the roads. That's part of the problem. Yeah, we had exactly. four-wheel drive, so we were we were able to go around and eat food and watch Kanye West and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, but I, what I really love, and no matter what cross it might do that's you, anybody might criticize, the fact that it's brought everybody together, it's allowed a sport that I do love and appreciate immensely, Olympic weightlifting, it's going to be competitive on a world scale, our, our nation. We're going to have better athletes this whole community will rise up together. <clears throat> the Olympic competitions will get better. Our nationals will get better. Everybody is improving and benefiting from this yeah. experiment. Yes. Yeah. What I really love Fact. is that now, like, I can be like Instagram. You're an Instagram queen. You do quite good on it. But now, like, I do like it a little bit. Dimitri Klokov you do can good. post stuff, yeah. can lift you over his head, can come <laughs> to the United States tour, share what he knows from behind the Dude. Iron Curtain. 
he can mix and say, hey, here's what, how I think you guys can get better, and we can all compete, like, as he says. We can all act in some way win together and improve together. Dude, he does say win together, and he also says team winner, which me oh, and my man. train partner, we love that. We're like, team winner all the time, all day. It's us, Dude, team how, winner. How, how else would have Klokov come over to the United States and do that and tour then, without CrossFit, like, without yeah. something like that? Let me teach and, you how to weight lift. Let me show you how strong I am. Yeah. Dude, and like, in, in the old school, like, Russians would have stayed in Russia weightlifting and living in a dorm or something like that. And yeah. now it, the, the story's changed. Now they're touring they here and the teaching us. They're teaching us what, oh, oh, there it goes. Um, I was going to say that, um, yeah, I did meet him at his, at his seminar, and it was very amazing, like, getting taught by all of them. I mean, Ilya as well. Ilya's amazing. Oh, yeah. And um, it's funny because, like, when he does give me tips on Instagram, like, if I if I, I posted a video of my three-rep max friend squat, like, six months ago, and his comment was, I had my hands open, and the bar was sitting in my hand, and then and then he, he his comment was, never Never front squat with open hand. Always close. And then there was like six thumbs ups on it. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to remember that for the rest close of my life. Hand. Close hand on front squat. Got close it. Close hand on front squat. Always close. <laughs> Never <laughs> open. But isn't that pretty awesome? Like, 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 excuse my part, my French, but a fucking gold medalist, the best way out there we've seen in a long time, is coaching you because this Through tool exists. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fantastic. It's pretty cool. I tell you yeah. what else. We say Diane sharing all the information on Instagram. It's an awesome coaching no, video. No, Diane's I I screenshot almost every single one of her posts. That's Not Di- the video, Diane but Fu. it's what Diane she Fu. says. I'm like, okay, oh, I yeah. gotta remember that, and then I read it sometimes when I'm going to coach. I'm like, all right, I gotta. She said it like this. I can remember that. Maybe a fourth of it. All right, I can say I can say yeah. that. I mean, we're learning from other coaches anyway, but this is a new era where we can learn from Instagram coaches. We can learn. Okay, like this is this is answering some people's questions because people that are following us are not just wanting to know. Like, hey, I want to see Andrea smile every day. That's not what they want from me. They also want to know uh, what. <laughs> which, which which pictures get the most likes? Come on now. Definitely not the ones in my swimsuit ever. Uh, I want a picture. <laughs> Can we get a picture of you? Let's put a picture of you in a swimsuit oh, with you holding like three kittens. Think, you know what? I got a way to blow up the internet. <laughs> yeah, you in a swimsuit because holding my, kittens. My, my biggest, kittens. my biggest, they my biggest Instagram. They really yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. My biggest Instagram success was a, a bacon donut. So what we need yes. to do is I'll get in a photo with a bacon donut, and you can be in your swimsuit, and we'll, we'll uh, I see what we'll you're doing. Rock we'll, the world. Yeah, yeah. We'll but take no, over Instagram for the day. But no, if you are, if you do, I would predict like 100,000 likes. You in a bathing suit holding a ham, like a Carl's Jr. hamburger, eating it, kitten in one hand. <laughs> like everybody will just go, I can't do it. The, the computers will all shut down. I love it when I posted a picture of me and Julie Fouché and oh actually it was you that texted me right and you said I think that you and Julie just broke the internet with that picture <laughs> I texted uh, to her and she was so embarrassed she was like oh <laughs> she doesn't know she doesn't, she doesn't know. know that she's beautiful oh, yeah. now uh, if you uh, are wondering what all that noise is in the background especially if you're just listening you wouldn't realize that we're at the NPFL Combine in the and Orleans they're, Arena. They're the, this is the, uh, I think this is the first time they're doing like live streaming. They're like testing it out right mm-hmm. now. And uh, the screen they have up, I'm, I'm getting distracted a little bit during the podcast, uh, but I'm, I'm able to focus. Uh, but the screen up here is cool. I mean, it's like what you would see in a professional sport if you're watching, you know, a college football it's a game. Jumbotron. Or, yeah, it's a jumbotron. It's a jumbotron. But even if I was at home watching this on the TV, uh, I would feel like I was watching like Are they like a team sport. It's yeah. edited like kind of like an NFL they're, game. They're doing an exhibition right now. And is it seven or? Uh, no, it's not that late. Uh, but it's uh, they're doing an exhibition right now, and they're doing like they're testing the live streaming right now. Tomorrow they're gonna live stream Five. this. This podcast will post, and all this is already online. One. But Race. this is really cool to watch. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you're wondering what all that noise is, that's what it is. Uh, if you want to check it out, npfl.com. And there's probably going to be the videos posted from this this combine competition. But uh, I'm actually uh, being distracted a little bit. Could you believe that I would be distracted talking? I'm, I'm talking to Andrea Ager. I'm getting distracted by a Jumbotron. <laughs> People lifting uh, weights. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, man, I'm not being that distracted. You need to focus. <laughs> you must fuck us. I, I'm, I, I pull my shit together. So. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's close this one up. What do you want to? Where do people find you? What's your Instagram? It is at Ager A G E R underscore B O M B bomb at Ager underscore bomb. Ager bomb. That's me on Twitter too. 
Um, I have a fan page on Facebook or just like a regular Facebook. And um, I have a blog, www.theandreaager.com. Oh, I don't know if I've checked out your blog. I oh, I wrote a lot of good stuff on there. <laughs> Open and honest it's and raw. It's mostly about like who I get to meet and how pumped I am. I'm everyone's fan, so <laughs> it's fantastic. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, and if someone wanted you to come to a seminar at their box, how they, they can, make that happen? They can go to my blog. So same thing: www.theandreager.com, and click on the um, request a visit, and my manager will get back to you because we have a lot. So we are trying to um, plan tours right now. Excellent. Awesome. Ooh, awesome. Planning tours. I like yeah. that. <laughs> All right, uh, make sure you go to barbellstrug.com, sign up for the newsletter. You can find out how to support the show later. Cheers. Cool. <laughs> I really fucking Yeah, you did awesome. Yeah. That was so deep. I was kind of pessimistic, but you know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs>